Some of the stories coming out of the American Special Operations community have such a high pucker factor, I doubt anyone would even believe them if there weren't official reports and footage of the events to back them up. Sergeant First Class Brendan O'Connor and his small team of Green Berets experienced one of the highest pucker factors of the GWAT back in the summer of 2006. They came so close to being captured alive by the Taliban that they actually took the time in the middle of a firefight to write letters to their loved ones. On June 24th, 2006, O'Connor's team of Green Berets and a handful of Afghan National Army soldiers were on a kill or capture mission southwest of Kandahar. When they walked right into a Taliban ambush and found themselves completely surrounded by over 200 Taliban insurgents. And as you can imagine, all hell broke loose. The team took fire from all directions. The Green Berets immediately found cover and began returning accurate fire on the enemy, somewhat repelling the ambush. The team leader, Master Sergeant Thomas Mahalik, then used an unmanned aerial drone to lead a few of the Green Berets to what appeared to be the Taliban command center just outside a nearby cemetery. But as they neared the location, the Taliban very quickly pulled back, which was extremely concerning and weird because the Green Berets were obviously obviously vastly outnumbered by the Taliban, so why would they give up their position so quickly? Well, it turns out the Taliban had planned ahead and set up a heavily fortified machine gun position just behind the cemetery. And now the Green Berets were stuck in the middle of the kill zone right where the Taliban wanted them. The Taliban machine gunner quickly opened up on the Green Berets position, pinning them down. But Staff Sergeant Matthew Benny, Staff Sergeant Joe Fewerst, and the team's translator made the brave decision to separate from the rest of the team in hopes of flanking the machine gunner and providing cover fire for their teammates. But as they moved, the machine gun fire fractured Benny's skull and shattered his shoulder, and a rocket-propelled grenade hit Fewerst in the chest. It thankfully didn't explode, but the blunt force trauma critically wounded him. The machine gun fire on them was so heavy that Benny later found bullet holes in his camelback water bladder and six bullet holes in his pants. The wounded Green Berets were now laying down on their faces in the dirt with just enough cover where the machine gun fire was going right over the top of their backs. Needless to say, this was a very bad position and they needed medical care immediately. O'Connor knew he had to do something quick to retrieve his teammates before they were killed or captured. At this point, the wounded Green Berets were so close to the Taliban that the team's translator could hear them taunting him, telling him that if he provided medical aid to his teammates so they could be captured alive, he would be forgiven. Thankfully, a 14 inch deep ditch stretched stretched across the field that separated O'Connor from his wounded teammates. So he quickly began the dangerous low crawl to his teammates. But as O'Connor crawled through the ditch, his body armor and pouches filled with dirt, raising his body off of the ground, exposing him to machine gun fire. So he made the incredibly brave decision to actually pull back to cover and remove his body armor so he could complete the crawl to his teammates. Unfortunately, the Taliban machine gunners quickly realized what O'Connor was trying to do and began focusing their fire on his position as he crawled. The machine gun fire going right over the top of O'Connor's body was so intense that it was literally mowing down the grass around him. Thankfully, the team leader Mahalik was able to climb on top of a nearby roof. Doing so put himself in a terribly exposed and dangerous position, but from that rooftop, he was able to hold back the Taliban and keep them from overrunning O'Connor's position. With Mahalik's support, O'Connor began dragging his wounded teammates back through the ditch to safety. And thanks to Mahalik's support, O'Connor was able to get his two wounded teammates and their translator back to safety. But unfortunately, in the process, Mahalik was struck in the head by a bullet 
and killed. And Fewerst also succumbed to his wounds as O'Connor dragged him to safety. Benny did make it to safety alive, though he was in very poor condition. Mahalik's death now left O'Connor in command. The men were not sure any of them would make it out of here without being killed or captured. So some of them took a small moment to write letters to their loved ones. But just when it seemed like all hope was lost, multiple AH-64 Apache gunships rolled in on their position and began raining heavy gunfire down on the Taliban. But even with the gunships tearing through the Taliban's numbers, the Green Berets were still completely surrounded. But thankfully, the Apache gunships were able to clear a path of all enemy fighters and then used an IR laser that could only be seen through the Green Berets' night vision goggles to lead the team about 600 meters in total darkness to safety. The Green Berets crawled their way out of the kill zone following the laser, while the gunships absolutely tore apart everything that wasn't following their laser. The team was then picked up by multiple Black Hawk helicopters and taken back to base where they received some much needed medical care. For his actions that day, Master Sergeant Brendan O'Connor received the Distinguished Service Cross. And Mahalik, as well as two other Green Berets, received the Silver Star for their courageous actions that day. As always, the goal of this video is to honor the incredible men and women who serve this country. This story is unbelievable. I can't wrap my head around the bravery each and every one of these men showed. And it absolutely blows my mind that no one knows about this. No one hears these stories. Nobody knows these dudes' names. It's crazy. But meanwhile, a serial killer gets all the publicity in the world. Everybody knows everything he did, everything about his life. He was a horrible person and everyone's obsessed with it. But these dudes that just do unbelievably incredible, selfless, brave actions every day nobody knows anything about him it just it blows my mind so that's the goal of this channel that's the goal of these videos is to honor these men and women by the sharing of their stories so if you guys are all about that and want to partner in me with that make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and as always guys if you want to see some of the combat footage that was too graphic for YouTube I have a link down in the description to the patreon where you guys can go check out all that uncensored footage and also help support what we do here on the channel. But with all that being said, I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.